In the previous videos, we used uh, two different ways uh, to uh, derive the Ricardian model. Uh, the first way is uh, to calculate uh, the opportunity cost based upon the unit labor requirement and the labor endowment in two economies. Uh, we use uh, the graphical tool, uh, PPF, uh, production possibility frontier, and CPF, uh, consumption possibility frontier, uh, to show gains from trade. Okay, uh, so that's the first way. The second way is to uh, rely upon our DRS uh, graph or model, okay, relative demand, relative supply. Um, as we discussed before, the logic uh, behind these two ways are very similar. Okay? We always want to find the opportunity cost. We always want to find the um, trading price, okay? which should stay uh, in between, okay? between the two uh, opportunity costs um, in these economies. And um, here, what we're going to do is uh, with the model already derived in front of us, and uh, we're gonna test it. Okay, so uh, specifically, we're gonna discuss two pieces of empirical evidence. Okay? Um, in economic literature, you should be able to find uh, a lot, okay? a lot of empirical studies testing the Ricardian uh, model. Okay, but here. Uh, we only picked two uh, to discuss. Now, the first one we're looking at is a comparison between U.S. and U.K. Okay, we're here. We're not talking about the trade between the two economies. We're actually talking about the trade between these two economies and the rest of the world. Okay, so for example, when you look at the vertical axis. This is a ratio of the U.S. versus British exports. So once again, it's their exports to the rest of the world. Okay. Now, uh, remember, when we move up along the vertical axis, you would find that U.S. tends to export more than U.K. Okay, to the rest of the world. Um, the horizontal axis is the ratio of the U.S. Uh, uh, versus British uh, productivity, okay, labor productivity, and when we move um, towards the right along the horizontal axis, that means uh, the U.S. becomes uh, more uh, productive, okay, in these uh, industries. Okay, um, in this study, we have um, twenty-six industries, okay, or sectors. So each red dot represents one industry, okay? And um, so, for example, uh, if we look at, uh, let's say, this one in the middle, okay, um, you would find that in that industry, uh, the U.S. export to the rest of the world is slightly uh, greater than British export to the rest of the world because the the value is slightly above one, okay, for that ratio. And if you go down to the horizontal axis, you would find that in that industry, uh, American product labor productivity is twice as much as the British one, okay, because again the value here the ratio is very close uh, to two. Okay, a little above uh, two. All right, so here um, with these uh, 26 uh, red dots on the graph, we can draw a trend line or a regression line okay, with these uh, 26 observations. And um, that's why you, know, you see this black line, it's all in line. Okay? And obviously, there's a very strong positive correlation between these two. Okay, in other words, 
the evidence says uh, U.S. Ex tends to export more to the rest of the world than U.K. does in the industries where uh, U.S. has a relatively higher labor productivity than, U uh, than U.K. Okay? In other words, the more productive uh, the U.S. in the industry, the more it exports. Okay, that's how we get this uh, um, positive correlation. Okay? Now, here, because this is a 400 level um, course, so I believe I have to point this out. Uh, if you are doing this as, you know, like um, your senior thesis or project, okay? uh, I hope you still remember from your uh, statistics or econometrics course that uh, the larger the sample size, the more accurate uh, your estimates. Okay, especially um, you know in, in international economics or macroeconomics, uh, oftentimes we have to deal with a small sample or relatively small sample size. Okay, uh, because here, for example, we only got twenty six industries. Okay, uh, but I would suggest you using uh, extreme caution when we uh, interpret these empirical results, because again the sample size is is small, okay, and uh, we we need to remain skeptical about you know how uh, accurate these uh, regression results are. Okay? Um, usually, the rule of thumb is uh, we would like the sample size to be larger than 30, okay? Because that way, um, you know, our error term in the regression uh, model uh, would be uh, close to a normal distribution, okay? All right, and the uh, and second thing I would like to... Uh, do here is uh, raise a question for you guys to think. Okay? Uh, from this uh, figure, do you believe we will be able to figure out in which industries the U.S. has an absolute advantage? In which industries the U.S. has a comparative advantage? If your answer is positive, how do you figure that out? Okay? If you said no, we don't have enough information to figure out AA or CA, then what else do you need to figure that out? Okay? And um, once again, um, bring your thoughts to uh, our class discussion. Okay? Uh, one clue I can give you is probably look at these uh, specific values here. Okay, for example, one and this uh, dash line, the horizontal line. And um, also think it, consider these values on the horizontal axis and say, you know, if any specific value may help you answer the question. All right. Okay. Um, the second uh, piece of empirical evidence uh, is the clothing exports. We're comparing Bangladesh versus China. Okay, again, uh, looking at their exports to the rest of the world uh, instead of the you know trade between these two specific economies. Okay, now several things we're looking at here in the table. The first one is when we look at all industries okay, between the two countries, we find find that uh, Bangladesh output per worker. Um, as a percent of China is 28.5%. In other words, the labor productivity in Bangladesh is only 28.5% um, of that in China. Okay? So uh, Chinese workers, uh, from this number, okay, or this evidence, um, are on average much more productive, okay? several times more productive than uh, their counterparts in Bangladesh. Okay? And we find that Bangladesh's exports as a uh, percent in China 
uh, from all industries is just one percent. In other words, if Bangladesh exports one dollar to the rest of the world, China exports one hundred dollars. Okay. Um, here, the second line in the table, we uh, look at a specific industry, apparel, okay, uh, or clothing. And uh, interestingly, here we find that um, Bangladesh output per worker is 77% 70, of that in China. In other words, uh, even in clothing industry, you still find that um, Bangladesh is less productive than China. Okay. However, compared to all other industries or all industry average, this number has been much better, okay, much higher. In other words, Bangladesh is relatively better at producing clothing or apparel compared to its own, uh, you know, productivity in other industries. Okay. Now uh, here. The last one number in the table, uh, Bangladesh exports is 15.5 percent uh, of that in China, which is again much higher than the overall uh, percentage, uh, export percentage, right? So here, remember, we we find that you know Bangladesh is uh, still less productive than China uh, in terms of clothing, but um, compared to other industries in Bangladesh, clothing, uh, they, they did a much better job. So they export more uh, to the rest of the world okay, compared to other industries. Again, not compared to China. So they, they still export less uh, of clothing to the, the rest of the world than China does. But compared to other industries in Bangladesh, um, the, the, the clothing industry does a much better job. Okay. Um, once again, when we work on the recording model, we got to be careful because there are actually two, um, you could say two layers or two dimensions of comparison. Okay. We're, we're comparing two economies for sure, but at the same time, we're comparing, uh, different industries within each of these, uh, economies. Okay. In other words, we're comparing uh, them with themselves. Now here, um, putting together, you will find that uh, both pieces of empirical evidence are pretty much in line with the recording model. Okay, so what we're saying is, uh, again, um, the uh, international trade okay, or trade pattern. By that we mean, you know, which country exports what, okay, and which country imports what from the rest of the world. Um, the trade pattern. Uh, depends upon comparative advantage, not absolute advantage, okay? I mean, in this uh, case, you know, uh, between Bangladesh and China, you find that, you know, China actually has absolute advantage um, in all industries, okay, on, on average, right? Including the clothing industry. However, Bangladesh can export relatively more uh, to the rest of the world I'm sorry, relatively more of clothing to the rest of the world uh, compared to other industries in Bangladesh. Okay? So, um, again, trade depends upon comparative advantage, not absolute advantage. Okay, that's exactly what um, the Riccardi model tells us. Okay? And um, there are some uh, misconceptions about comparative advantage or the Riccardi model in general. So in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, several uh, misconceptions, okay?